Let's talk about Cameroon 3, Serbia 3. Ant says, game of the tournament. John, you were on the minute by minute for this one. And there were some really good minutes in it. Two and a half minutes, in fact, uh, in which Serbia scored uh, their goals at the end of the first half. And then uh, Cameroon staged that comeback. Um, and it was uh, Vincent Aboubakar uh, who gave, I think, what's been the best performance of the World Cup so far, I'd say this. Um, he came off the bench. Um, uh, Rigid Bear Song obviously felt he couldn't play two strikers at once. We, we know we don't allow that anymore. That's not allowed under FIFA regulations. <laughs> and he came on and, wow, what a performance. Uh, absolutely took them apart and scored, and I'm going to name it the goal of the tournament, um, that scoop. Uh, the scoop that I think he scored it thinking he was offside and thought, I'm going to just see what I can do here, freestyle it. And it goes in and it's a beauty. It's Pavorsky. It's a, you net, you know, it's almost a hoddle esque little looping finish. Beautiful. It's so high, isn't it? I mean, it's so unnecessarily high. It was like, yes. I think Charlie Baker, my mate, said that's the funnest goal of the World Cup. And it really was because it, it, it got so much height that it bounced into the roof of the net. <laughs> um, and yeah, I agree with you. I think he probably thought he was offside. But when you first saw that clip and you thought, Barry, actually, he's on. It was such a brilliant moment waiting for that goal to be given. Yeah, I like John, I'm pretty certain he thought he was offside and was just, you know, freestyling because uh, he didn't celebrate and there was a look of very pleasant surprise when the goal was given. Um, and, I mean, he did scoop it very high, but Milinkovic Savage in, in the uh, Serbian goal is about eight foot tall, so you, <laughs> you obviously have to. <laughs> but he was lying on the ground, Milinkovic Savage, wasn't he, at the time, wasn't he? He wasn't standing up. I he? don't think he was, no. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I stand corrected, but that's not how I recall the event, but um, you, may, you may be right. I thought he was still on his feet. But, um, yeah, a really fun goal. And then Abu Bakar... Uh, was played in behind again for, for the third Cameroonian goal, or squared the ball for Chippa Moting, who, who basically just had to walk it in at the far post. So uh, a really, really fun game. Yeah, and uh, the Serbian right-back, Milinkovic, certainly not part of the Arsenal back four of the early 90s, <laughs> was he? Like, just constantly <laughs> playing everybody onside with his hand in the air, going, oh, oh dear. But Bam says, where does... Abubakar's goal for Cameroon sit in the lob versus chip paradigms <laughs> debate. Realistically, it's a scoop. But does that mean that we have a three-way scoop versus lob versus chip conversation? Please clarify, Mac. I would say, Jordan, you have to add dink into that as well. And they're all different, aren't they? Well, don't they all link into lob eventually? So if you chip a keeper, you've lobbed him. If you yeah. dink over the keeper, you've lobbed him. So if you scoop it, you've lobbed him. So I think that the conundrum is chip versus dink versus scoop not log lob shouldn't be in that equation right they all come lob. under the lob they all that's the umbrella but i think when it, when you say a lob it means that you've spotted the keeper off his line and i think with a dink you're sort of through and the ball's on the bounce maybe and so you just dink it the keeper might not be off you know the keeper might be coming out that's, that's fair that, that's fair yeah. i guess you can dink it and the mm. keeper doesn't have to doesn't, doesn't got to go over his head. Yeah, fair, fair, fair enough, fair enough. I just I just think intrinsically lob. I think of over one's head, and yes. how you get it over one's head is yeah. up to conjecture. <laughs> <laughs> if if only there was another podcast specifically devoted to this kind of pedantry. <laughs> <laughs> it is, and it's a very good one actually. Um, David says, "Where does Barry rate that Mitrovic goal on the Ethan Pinnock team goal scale?" I know that the defending was, was suboptimal, but for I mean, it had a it had Milinkovic Savage doing a kind of sharing him to Shearer pass to Zinkovic, who then instead of being Shearer and roofing it, was so composed he gave it to Mitrovic. I thought it was delightful. Yeah, and I did actually. <laughs> it's funny our listener mentioned that because I did think of the Ethan Pinnock goal when when that <laughs> of went. Of course you did. Of course you did. When are you not thinking of that? <laughs> I spent an, an unhealthy amount of time t thinking about that Ethan Pinnock goal against Liverpool. But, um, yeah, I mean, there was four Cameroon defenders and the goalkeeper all in close proximity to um, Mitrovic when, that, when he slotted that ball into the empty net. But there was very little they could do about 
because the passing was just so one touch precise passing and uh, it, it was a remarkable effort. I mean, I guess aside from how brilliant this game was, it doesn't really help either, Rob, no. does it? No, uh, I was just running through the permutations at the end of this group. Um, and obviously Brazil are through. Uh, but it is a very complicated scenario at the end of the game, at the end of it, uh, in which Ke- it re- obviously Cameroon have to beat Brazil. Now, it is possible uh, Brazil may field a reserve team, but that's still going to be a strong team. And then you're down to goal difference. Um, and judging by the way Mitrovic collapsed to the floor at the end of that game. Now, uh, his was a good goal, but he missed about three or four in a fashion that uh, we've become used to him not missing in the Premier League. Reminded a bit more of his Newcastle uh, persona. Um, I think Serbia knew that this one might have got away from them. And actually, just talking about this game, uh, again, I'll come back to this guy, Abubakar. I think without his intervention um, and his brilliance, in fact, I think what we might have had, and maybe some of you might be disappointed, would have had a classic World Cup war. Because I think these two, were it was bubbling up. There was a lot of needle flying around out there. And I just think there was a point. Uh, and, and actually, it was this phenomenon we've got quite a lot in the World Cup now. And uh, it happened in the Brazil game as well. And in fact, they, they went early and have got it wrong, which is part of being a substitute at this World Cup is that you must run on the field and celebrate <laughs> yeah. every goal. And what happened in this game is that um, when Cameroon scored the first goal, it really annoyed Serbia. And then they did the same. And then it, you, yeah, you're in free-for-all territory, aren't you? And... Uh, I, I don't know if FIFA have a directive on this. Didn't the ref book like one player from each to kind of sort yes, of token? Yes, he did, yeah. You'll get a yellow, but there are like everybody's, you could have booked everybody. Yeah, exactly. And and I think that's obviously the way. And uh, uh, and I, 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 forgive me for not recalling the, the Cameroon player, but the Cameroon player who got booked for his part in the uh, mass celebration looked to grief. It was like, well, why are you booked? What are you booking me for? And it's like, well, obviously, you've been booked for celebrating. And it's always like, why aren't you booking everybody else? It's like, well, that's not really very good for the team, is it? <laughs> That's one of those patterns of the World Cup. And I think maybe if there had been one more goal and a mass celebration, it might have gone off. But uh, I was thinking of, you know, Battle of Bern, Battle of Santiago at a certain point. But uh, thank you for Abubakar for his excellence and great football. That being the winner. It, it was slightly reminiscent of that famous Ryder Cup incident where all the Americans ran across a green to celebrate. Oh, over Ollie's line. You never, Sam Torrance going, you don't walk across Ollie's line. How could you? <laughs> but Ollie still had a pot to, to tie the game, I think. Um, and that created a hell of a lot of bad blood. And this was quite similar. 